Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your Messages from Saturn Pick a Card Reading. I'm excited to finally be doing this. I've been felt like this was on the back of my mind for a, about a month now, but today it finally feels like the day. Maybe it's because I'm filming this one day before the full moon in Aquarius. I just realized that right now. So I guess we'll see what Saturn has in store for you guys. Go ahead and pick your card. It's pile one, two, three, four, and I'll see you in your readings. Hey, pile one, welcome to your tower moment. I'm excited for you guys because you are really ready for this and you are about to seize the day. Like this is carpe diem. This is one of those really evolved tower moments where you are going to kind of <laughs> like grab life by the balls and roll with it. You're not going to be sitting around feeling traumatized or going, oh, I can't handle this or, oh, I just want to go back to the way things were. I feel like you guys are really, really ready for this. You have been asking for it. You have been waiting for the shift and here it comes. And it is, this is your moment to really step into your self mastery and to understand that you get to call the shots from here on out. You are manifesting your reality the way you want it designed. Because just look at the cards here, but you know, you do have this tower card, you know, but what is going along with it? <laughs> you got the sun, okay? You got the sun, the tower, Eight of Wands, which is just telling me that this is going to be happening really quickly, really rapidly, rapid movement and rapid manifestation of whatever you're you're shooting for. <laughs> the Lovers and the King of Swords. So, you know, if you guys are going to gonna have a Tower moment, these are the kind of cards you want to go with the Tower card because the Sun card for me, always comes up when you're about to have life-changing good news. You know, I've literally gotten this tower card when on a day when I was sitting around thinking that this is going to be terrible. How am I possibly going to get through the next two years in this horrible situation? And then bam, it just takes one phone call for this good news that just comes in out of nowhere. You know, my, my husband was, was in this job where he was working out of town and it just really sucked for everybody involved. And boom, out of nowhere, he gets this job offer where, it, you know, it was really good pay. It was basically his ideal job and he was going to be at home. And it just completely changed the course of, you know, two years of our lives. And it's that kind of good news that can just drop out of the sky and radically shift everything. And you can be going, wow, I can't believe, I can't believe that everything shifted like that. And I was spared this stretch of highway that I really didn't want to go down. So this is really the, the best kind of tower moment eight and this eight of wands. It can, your whole reality, your whole paradigm can shift like that. So whatever energy you're sitting in right now, <laughs> know that that can little like in an eye blink whoosh, out and coming into this energy of the lovers and the King of Swords. This is a divine alignment. The King of Swords, you are getting your, like the sword, this sword he's got, you know, pointing up. This is an axis point. You know, do you know, you know what people really mean or when they say, you know, you need to be aligned, get aligned, getting in alignment. You know, you know, in spiritual circles, people talk a lot about alignment. But what does that actually mean? <laughs> um, I think of it as getting all of your energy centers. So you can, there's a lot to it. Getting all of your chakras in balance and in alignment. If you think of, you know, your root chakra, your uh, sacral chakra, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown chakra, those, you know, we want them <laughs> in a straight line. We want them to be creating an axis, almost like along our spine, you know, the, uh, our spine, 
is an is our axis and but beyond that we don't want to be in alignment you know just inside of our own bodies it is getting alignment with you know all the layers of our energy bodies our light body um our higher selves getting everything centered on the same axis point that puts all of ourselves all aspects aspects of ourselves together in the same spot literally as if there's like a pin going down keeping everything on an axis you know just like the north and south pole of the earth getting everything all together and it actually makes me laugh you know what do people mean when they say get your shit together they mean get a, get in alignment get aligned get all your stuff in one spot um i i i really love that how you know we have this colloquial term for you know getting in alignment and it's just get your shit together man it's because when you look at somebody uh you can tell when they're out of alignment and you know on a colloquial level, we just think, oh, you know, that person is all over the place. They're like a, they're just splintered and chaotic all over the place. And we say, get your shit together because it's really like you're just spread out and you're fractured and you're not all in one spot. You're not um, orbiting around your own axis. So that is where this is all going. And it is because you've been doing your internal alchemy With this lover, lover's card, balancing your energies, balancing, getting everything in balance, you know, your masculine and feminine, your inner and your outer, all of your different paradigms, you're coming into balance because you have done the inner work. You guys, I feel, have definitely been like doubling down on your personal path on your personal development on your spiritual work whatever it is for you it is gonna start to reflect in your external world because with the lovers and the king of swords that is this inner alignment that this king's sword is literally representing the king is such an external energy such an extroverted energy that it's like since you are getting so aligned and you're you're so balanced and in your own integrity and in your own authenticity, finally you're going to start to see your external environment reflect that because you are kind of this linchpin holding it all together. You are holding frequency for the people and all of the beings around you and it's starting to snap into place. Yeah, you, you guys are really some kind of uh, like anchor point in your environment look at these uh oracle cards new moon eclipse expect powerful change be bold and make the first move cardinal moon and right in the middle here 11 inspiration look at this beautiful sunrise Wow, look at this glow beaming out. That is coming from inside of you. You guys are such bright lights. And this powerful change that is coming is all going to be emanating from your inner self. You're being literally asked here to be bold and make the first move. Okay. Uh, this this cardinal moon energy, you know, so Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, Libra, that cardinal energy, that is that the defining point, like the the one archetypal energy. You know, I have so much uh, Capricorn energy in my chart, so I really feel the significance of of cardinal cardinal signs and that idea of being you know each uh each element in the zodiac you know water fire air earth each has a cardinal sign and those the sign that is the cardinal sign for that element it it really holds frequency for all the other for all of its you know sibling <laughs> sibling signs um capricorn holding that uh that earth energy frequency for taurus and for virgo really just 
holding it down, defining it, and kind of letting, you know, the other earth signs know what the direction is that they want to go in, what the kind of core essence of being earth energy is. And that is that kind of aligned and archetypal energy you guys are tuning into. I just having a little bit of trouble <laughs> articulating this uh, in a way that will make sense. I just have such this feeling that you guys are like the rock that isn't rolling. You know, that, that line in the stairway to heaven to be a rock, but not to roll. Almost like you're a flagpole or like a nexus point. You guys are some kind of bedrock for other people and a, a frequency holder. You people are looking up to you. People are looking to you for direction. People are looking to you for definition. People are looking to you to figure out what to do next or how um, how to be there. Yeah, you guys are tuned in to such a deep level of your higher selves, you know, your oversoul. Um, and if you have like an idea of what your higher self is like, know that there is a, you know, higher, an even higher level of that that is more purely you, more defined more more of yourself you guys <laughs> that is what that's what it is you you guys are becoming becoming i could leave the sentence like that you are becoming period you know you are getting so in touch with your higher selves so in touch with your the layers and layers and layers of your consciousness and all of your parallel selves it's like you're getting bringing all aspects of yourselves together like you are um You guys are no longer uh, fragmented. Of course, you're still the self in a human body, so it's not like you. It's not like you've become all that is, right? But compared to so many other people, uh, where so many other people are right now, um, you know, most everybody is so fractured, um, you know, so splintered. Their soul is fragmented so many times, and that happened to you too. That happens to all of us. That's part of how we get so far out here you know, in, onto earth into third density, but you guys have done the work to bring so many aspects of yourselves back together. And you're so much more of yourself now than you were. Yeah, that's really what this is. <laughs> you are so much more of yourselves than you were. And so now the question for you is what do you do next? What do you do next? And you need to be looking only to your own inspiration, only to your own inner guidance. You no more, no more, no more, never again looking outside of yourselves um, for direction. And of course, that doesn't mean that you stop listening to other perspectives and stop, you know, exploring other options or whatever. You know, you're here watching this YouTube video and, you know, that's fine. You know, take in what resonates from this video and from your friends and from your guides or whoever and that's fine that's all that's all good you want to be you still want to be gathering other perspectives but you you never again never never again do you ever um like subjugate your own idea or your own inspiration or your own wisdom or guidance or whatever for some external force you <laughs> you only ever follow your own intuition, your own instincts, your own passions, your own drives. Like you are it. You are it. You you have a level of alignment and integrity and wholeness. You are you are becoming more of your whole self. You know, I've actually been thinking about this. We talk all, all the time about the higher self. I think it's really more of the whole self, right? <laughs> the whole self. If you can tune into the highest aspect of yourself it is that is your whole self that is your soul before it has as splintered off into all of these other pieces and you guys are so much more of your whole self than you have ever been you know since you first fractured that you you need to be just embodying that embodying your own energy and like, <laughs> this is it. And, and this is not like an arrogant thing or a selfish thing or a self-serving thing. 
because by being your whole self and by following only your own guidance, your own internal guidance system, that is how you serve the collective. That is how you best serve others because by by being your whole self and by only ever doing what is perfectly inspired by your whole self, you give everyone else permission to do the same. You show them that they also can be their whole selves and they can also do only as their own heart guides them. This is, this is you know, it's not about you setting yourself apart or above others. This is about you simply being you and by doing that, allowing everybody else to simply be them. And hey, this is going to radically, radically shift your life path, your life direction. Yeah, this this tower moment, I don't, it's not even really coming from the outside. I don't think you guys need to worry about, you know, your house burning down or losing a job. You know, that is how tower mo moments kind of manifest in the 3D way. But you guys are, <laughs> you guys are moving into 5D if you like to think of it that way or into the age of Aquarius if you like to think of it that way. But really, it's just you're so much more of your whole self that you know, you are your own tower moment. You becoming this more whole version of yourself, that is your tower moment. And you will, by doing that, be radically, just energetically, just in your energy. You don't even need to do anything, but hold this energy and be yourself. And in however you live your life, as you hold that you kind of will be rippling out little tower, tower moments for other people in a really good service-oriented, benevolent way because you will be helping people literally by just your energy transform their own lives and become more of their whole selves. So that is fucking awesome. <laughs> and thank you guys for existing. And I think that is your message from Saturn. He is very proud of you guys because you you are embodying that kind of Saturnian archetype. You know, Saturn Saturn uh is almost like a Luciferian fall fallen energy. Um like that that kind of pattern, that kind of energetic archetype where you know you could do you guys know about, you know, there's all kinds of myths about how Saturn was our second sun, the sun was actually a dual star system and Saturn was so bright. Saturn was so bright that he, that light was basically stopping life in the solar system from being able to flourish. You know, it was like too, too much light, too much energy and the kind of third density life that was trying to evolve in the solar system couldn't, couldn't do it. So some beings came along and siphoned him off and siphoned his energy off and made him small, turned him into, you know, the little, you know, little <laughs> gas giant planet that he is now and stuck him way out into the darkness, out past Jupiter. And it's funny because everybody thinks that Jupiter is the other planet in the solar system that, you know, almost became a star. You know, Jupiter almost, almost got big enough to ignite and become a star and become the binary star of Sol, our sun. But really it, it was, it was Saturn. Um, it was Saturn and he was uh, taken down a peg, had to go through this fall, this cycle into darkness because he was so bright. But of course, he took on this, um, this cycle, this lesson, this experience because he knew that in the long run, he would become the fucking badass <laughs> planet that he is now. And that this way he can serve all of us. So, you know, you guys are embodying that kind of archetype. And I hope when I say Luciferian, that doesn't give anybody like, you know, weird satanic jitters. That's not what I mean at all. Um, I, I mean, really coming back to Capricorn energy and this idea of a being being so bright, being the brightest and the strongest and but actually being too bright for everybody else. So then self out of their own free will, choosing to take on this this fall so that they can regrow and go through this kind of redemption arc and reclaim their place. And that whole 
fall and redemption cycle is not just an experience worth having for their own good, but also an experience worth having to serve the whole collective. And that is you guys. That is you guys. You can think in your own life about how you have ever been siphoned off because you were too bright for everybody else to handle and how you have been this whole time climbing your way back up to reclaim your light. And this is it, guys. This is the time where you really, truly do, you are reclaiming your light. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that That is it, guys. Uh, just thank you once again for existing and for holding this frequency. It is awesome. You guys are my soul family. I love you. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading. You guys have a very interesting set of five cards because they're like, <laughs> this is a mirror. Look at this. Right in the middle, two, two of swords, <laughs> which, you know, we could split that right in half and the card would mirror itself. Then moving outwards, we have two fives. The five of swords over here, five of wands over here. Those are both kind of unpleasant cards of, you know, conflict. The five of wands being external conflict that doesn't really need to be happening, but it's kind of born of everybody's just frustration and because they're fighting with sticks, right? They're not fighting with swords, they're fighting with sticks. So the conflict is never as bad as it seems, but there is just still, you can feel that energy of really abrasiveness and you guys are obviously sensitive and empathic and you can really feel that hostility all around you. That is the five of wands over here with the five of swords. It is kind of a um, picking up the pieces after a battle, the five of swords, there was a real battle with real swords on a battlefield. And right now you're going through the, you know, the five of swords energy is the grief process uh, after, after that battle. And out on the edges, you have two knights, knight of cups over here and knight of wands over here. And I am just, I'm explaining it in this way instead of, you know, going left to right or something because I'm so struck by how, how this ripples out from this two of swords. Um, it, it like, this is really strangely non-linear. I don't know if you guys have been having some kind of experience lately to do with like non-linear expressions. If you've been wondering about the linearity of time or how time is an illusion or how we, you know, don't necessarily need to be experiencing our lives in a straight line. There, there is something here about like lifting the veil on the experience of linearity. And honestly, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. I don't know where you guys are at with this. Well, I kind of stew on this, uh, let's take a look at your Oracle cards. Um, self mastery. This is really cool. Look at this. This is somebody lighting up all of their chakras coming into alignment and mastering their own energy. This card is about taking responsibility for the way your environment is reflecting your own energy back at you. You know, I was talking to a, a client, a private client yesterday about this actually, about how, uh, you know, a lot of us walking this kind of spiritual path, we, we kind of hear about how you know, we are co-creating our reality, you know, our inner energy is what attracts and manifests our outer environment. We kind of know that, you know, on some level, everything that we experience is something we've done to ourselves. And, you know, we're all choosing our experience of this reality. And we kind of know that, but we don't typically experience it very viscerally. But more and more, uh, the energies kind of coming into earth are going to be in allowing us and inviting us to realize that more and more. And you guys are right there. 
right there where you're starting to notice things. Like if you ha you encounter some kind of problem, you know, it can be something completely stupid. Like maybe you have a package that didn't show up and the company you ordered it from uh, isn't helping you and, you know, FedEx isn't helping you and, and everyone's just kind of jerking you around and you're like, this is so, this is such a stupid problem. You know, you understand that it's a stupid problem, but you're still so angry about it because it's just frustrating. And it's like, why do I have to deal with how I, why do I have to deal with this? Right. You know, you in the past, you might have just gotten really angry and frustrated and sort of like blaming, you know, the shipping company and all that. But, you know, in this kind of energy, you're starting to go, OK, wait, hold on a second. Why? Why did I manifest this problem for myself? Why would my higher self have done this to me? Like, what is the lesson here? What is the bigger picture here? You know, that is the first steps to owning literally everything that happens in your environment. You know, you're owning the problem. You're going, okay, I'm not a victim here. You know, I'm not, um, I'm not even the victim of random events. This is, this is somehow a reflection of my energy. And this is some kind of catalyst. There's, this is part of a bigger picture. That's what I'm talking about. Self mastery, where you are really owning the fact that you are creating your whole experience here. Yeah, and these moon cards are, let me show you, full moon in Pisces, balance spirituality and practicality, and new moon and Capricorn. Your hard work is paying off. Isn't <laughs> that, that's actually really cool that the uh, balance spirituality and practicality, and then the other card you got was Capricorn, because if you were going to pick the, you know, the sign that kind of vibes the most spiritual out of all of the astrological signs, you might pick Pisces, right? And if you're going to pick the card that is the most um, practical and concerned about mastering reality, you might pick Capricorn. <laughs> so to have Pisces and Capricorn, this really sings to me, actually, because I, I am a Capricorn and I have a Pisces North Node. And balancing that is very, very interesting. And that is exactly, this is exactly what I mean about owning the fact that you are the creator of your reality because you're starting to see that there really is no divide from your spiritual self and your spiritual explorations of, you know, however you guys explore your spirituality, right? You know, if you're into interdimensional things or the angelic realms or whatever it is, mediumship, stuff like that, you know, maybe in the past that was like a separated from your mundane life. And then, you know, you would get up from meditation or working with your crystals or doing yoga. And then you would go about your life and just deal with your mundane problems like cooking dinner and grocery shopping and paying the bills. And there was a little bit of a schism. There was a schism between your spiritual life and your physical mundane life. But now that is really starting to blur together and you're starting to see not only does you, your uh, your spiritual life and your inner energy literally create your physical reality, but also that the things you used to think were not spiritual, you're really starting to realize that they really are. Um, for example, you know, if you're into witchcraft, um, or even if you're just, you know, even if you're not a practicing witch, even if you're just kind of interested in stuff like that, interested in reading about how people do rituals and um, and in the moon phases and stuff, you might think, oh, you know, it's it's this full moon and I have to plan this ritual and I have to fast and me meditate and work with these crystals or, you know, make this spell jar, whatever it is. Um, and, and you might have in the past gone hard on yourself going, oh, those spiritual people, they do all of these really cool rituals and they do all of these practices, you know, on the full moon and the new moon. And, you know, you might have felt like you weren't being spiritual enough because on the full moon, maybe you... Uh, went to a party or you just ate a bucket of ice cream in front of some cheesy Netflix movie. <laughs> and, you know, you might have felt like, oh, you were failing at your spirituality. But there is no difference. <laughs> there is no there is no difference. Whatever you end up doing, if if you are following, if you're tuned into your heart frequency and you are following your own inner guidance and your own inner, inner intuition, whatever you end up doing on the full moon or the new moon or whatever the hell it is, that is is your spiritual experience and that is what you were supposed to be doing and you can be learning just as much from some stupid netflix movie and your bucket of ice cream that that can actually be a more spiritual experience for you than somebody doing a full-blown like wicca ritual with their coven 
right? It is all about how tuned in you are to your own energy and to the energies that are incoming and how you're alchemizing and blending it all together. Um, you know, I have an experience with that. It was actually last year's Lionsgate, August 8th, uh, where I was stuck at a family reunion and I felt like I was missing out and that I wanted to, I was like, oh, you know, I wish I could be doing something cool, like come something spiritual on Lionsgate. Uh, and here I am stuck at this stupid family reunion. And then we ended up going somewhere and I had the most insane deja vu. And I remembered having dreamt the whole experience. And that just so clicked for me because I was like, holy crap. I was like guided to be here. This is where I'm supposed to be. This, this family reunion that I don't even want to be at. This is how I'm supposed to be experiencing the, the Lionsgate portal. That was, that was my spiritual experience for that. So yeah, all just to say you guys are really seeing how the singularity between your spiritual life and your physical reality life and how it's all one in the same. And that is giving you, yeah, your mastery of both worlds because really they're one world. Okay, now that I <laughs> got all that from those oracle cards, this weird split and like flowing outwards in these tarot cards makes a lot more sense because, okay, with this two of swords in the middle, you might feel like you have some kind of choice to make or maybe you feel like you're living a double life with your spirituality and your mundane life. Uh, you know, maybe you have to hide your spirituality or some of your spiritual beliefs or practices from your family you know, <laughs> um, yeah, feeling a little bit split, feeling divided, feeling like there's a fork in the road. But the trick here is to know that it doesn't matter which way you go. It's going to be basically the same, you know. OK, so on the one hand, we have five of swords and knight of cups. And on the other hand, we have five of wands and knight of wands. Those aren't exactly the same energies, but I feel like those are your two paths. These are your fork in the road. And really at the end of the day okay you know the left path isn't exactly the same as the right path but it's it's close enough it's basically the same you know so this decision that you're facing or this split that you're facing this divide is just not as big of a deal as you might think it is it is it's like if you're trying to figure out you know what shade of blue to paint your bathroom you know, that might seem like a big deal, but really once you get the walls painted and you're taking a bath, it's, you know, you're going to be happy with whatever shade of blue <laughs> it is. And it, it's just, it'll be good. It'll be fine. You know, it's not going to be a big uh, life-changing problem either way. And so that's how I see this, you know, you know, going, if you pick, you know, the left-hand path, we'll call it, um, you know, this way, this might actually be a little more painful because of the five of swords is really like a mental conflict that hurts you all the way into your heart. Uh, but then the knight of cups come, comes along to kind of heal, heal that. So this, this pain might be a little bit more sharp and personal and really, uh, more internal, more feeling it in your mind and in your heart space. But there, there is this love and healing and this offer of love and healing that comes in and heals that. And then you go on and you're good. And if you, this right hand path, this, this other way, it's all wands energy. So like I was saying, the five of wands is really external conflict, but again, everyone's fighting with sticks. So it's just having to, it's the kind of energy that empaths really don't want to be around because, you know, if you're a fly on the wall in a room and everybody is fighting, just arguing and being stupid, you know, that is really, that just really, you guys know what that's like. You guys know exactly what it's like. You don't need me, me to explain that. You know, so that is a, that's not fun. That's a bad time. But at the same time, nothing actually happens to you. You know, nobody ends up with any broken bones. Nothing, no horrible things happen to anybody. It's just a really unpleasant time. And then you come into the Knight of Wands where, um, you know, the Knight of Wands kind of comes in to clean this out. If this is a bunch of peasants or maybe unruly pages, fighting with sticks, the knight comes by to like knock sense back into everybody. And then you go on and then you, uh, you know, continue on with your life. So yeah, if you're trying to make some kind of decision or if you feel like there are two sides to your life, I, I feel like you can just go with the flow, you know, drop into your heart space, feel into which way you're kind of being guided to go, but don't even worry about making the wrong decision. 
don't worry that it's going to be some kind of fatal mistake or that things are going to be drastically different either way. It's going to be, it's going to be fine. <laughs> it's, it's all really going to be basically the same. You know, this isn't, this is not a big deal because, and that is because of how you are balancing your spirituality and your mundane reality. It, it, you, it is all coming into oneness. And that is, um, the significance for that as you continue to walk through your life is that you won't really have to worry about making decisions that are drastically uh, wrong. It's like when you face forks in the road from now on, they're going to be very similar in frequency because you have kind of dropped into this singularity space where everything is coming, coming into alignment and coming into wholeness. Yeah. Yeah, so I think what Saturn wants you guys to know is that just just keep putting putting one foot in front of the other and you don't need to worry too much about how things are going to be rippling out in your external environment because you are coming into a place of balance and that is going to allow you to navigate your reality with so much more equanimity than you have in the past. So if you have a little bit of trauma about decision making, I know there are <laughs> a lot of people who all, who really can't make can't make decisions because they feel like they've made wrong decisions in the past, but you know, all of your mistakes or wrong decisions were what brought you exactly to where you are now and you are exactly where you need to be. This is exactly where you're supposed to be. So those decisions might have seemed like mistakes, but <laughs> really they were the path you took to get here and you're where you're supposed to be because now you are reaching self-mastery. Self-mastery, guys. This is you. This is you. And really with all of these chakras lighting up, you know, you've, I think you've been through periods in your life where you've worked on every single one of them. And that is why you're coming into this space of, um, I'm sorry, guys. Can you guys hear my cat? He's outside my door. Just... He's 17 years old and there's nothing I can do to get him to stop meowing. <laughs> so I'm sorry, that really distracted me. Um, yeah, basically all of your chakras are lit up and I feel like you've gone through periods in your life where, you know, you have worked on every single one of your seven chakras and now you've kind of completed that cycle. And I think moving forward, you'll, you're going to be activating your soul star chakra, which is above your head and your earth star chakra which is the center of the earth and you're going to be going to be connecting that way and that is going to be um expanding you so much more so this is really a a turning point moment for you where you are kind of having a little bit of graduation day <laughs> and i don't want to forecast too much but i can just tell you that anybody who has gotten kind of finished working on their seven chakras that is just means you're getting ready for the further expansion into opening up into more areas more uh more areas of yourselves, more aspects of yourselves. So this is a really good place to be and you're really just getting ready to blast off into a more expanded future. So I have to go deal with my cat. <laughs> Your guys' messages are done. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, pile three, welcome to your reading. Your guys' is, is pretty... Uh pretty clear I'm feeling which I, I appreciate because the last two readings were really intense and I have feel a little bit of a brain fog <laughs> brain fog going on but you guys can see it right up top with your oracle cards first up north node step out of your comfort comfort zone so if uh, just for anybody who's not familiar with the astrological idea of the north node it is this part of your chart that basically shows you what kind of new and unfamiliar energy or kind of lessons you're going to be leaning into in your life. Um, you know, for example, for me, I have a North Node in Pisces in the fourth house, which means I really had to learn to stop being uh, <laughs> micromanaged me and judgmental and like serious and had to really lean into that Pisces energy of... Um, kind of going with the flow, leaning into emotions and spirituality and understanding that everything is equal. Like Pisces is such a consolidating energy to me. 
And this was, I mean, a lesson I'm still learning. And, you know, part, the, making, the fact that I make these videos is actually part of my North Node journey. So the North Node journey can be very uncomfortable because, especially at first, because you're having to leave behind your South Node, you know, whatever energies you had really consolidated in past lives and move into a whole new territory. It is like a the part of your birth chart that shows where you're going to be pulled, like pulled out of your comfort zone. So for you guys right now, you're being asked to move into a state of forgiveness. And that is, if that is part of your North Node journey, I can only assume that you guys have been really screwed over in the past. Because if you're having to practice forgiveness and Open, learn to open up your heart. That is only because of lifetimes worth of, you know, just being betrayed, being victimized and being uh, put in situations that made you harden your heart, made you put protect protections around your heart, possibly clogging up, literally like putting in blocks into your heart chakra so that you couldn't feel, you know, you could end up in a position where you uh, in order to not feel pain, you pl like plug up your heart and you end up also being able, unable to feel joy um, and unable to, you know, give and receive love. So being asked to move in to forgiveness, you know, this is a really significant time in your life and it's going to be, you know, uncomfortable, but just know that this really, really, really serves your highest good because once you learn to forgive other people, and especially once you learn to forgive yourself, um, that that literally heals your heart, that uh, kind of dissolves the barriers you've erected around your heart, pulls out any plugs you've inserted into your heart, and opens you up to um, into being able to be in the flow of love. Like if you've ever felt like you just can't ever feel experience joy or happiness the way you want to feeling numb all the time, uh, just, you know, feeling apathetic. Like there's never anything worth living for, just never anything really good in life. And this doesn't even have to be, you know, that doesn't have to manifest as depression. All that's definitely part of it. It can just be a sense of the world is gray. Like what is the point in doing anything? Um, that is because, you know, those, the, the traumas you've experienced that have caused you to block up your heart are also, you know, they're protecting you from feeling pain, but they're also preventing you from feeling joy. So, you know, if you need a little bit of, of a, like a practical reason to forgive yourself and others, <laughs> it is once you do this, the heart healing that ensues will will allow you to feel the joy and the enthusiasm and the love that you want in your life. And, you know, I'm not just saying this from an, like an intellectual or a spiritual perspective. I know this because I have walked this path. Um, you know, I have been depressed and apathetic and numb for most of my life. And <laughs> really learning to practice forgiveness, as cheesy as that is, you know, there is an actual energetic function to forgiveness and it is to heal our hearts and to open us up into the flow of love so it really does work as you might be cringing going you know i don't i don't like <laughs> that just seems silly or cheesy i get i get that it's cringy i used to have the same reaction but it really does work and so you know just from a purely practical perspective it'll be worth it for you to do this because it will improve the experience of your life and of course i love this new moon a new start is coming. I'm just really, really drawn into this, you know, black moon, this new moon. That is, that to me symbolizes, um, you know, a chakra, I think in this context, a heart chakra that has been blocked, but it's going to be getting cleared out, like all the residue, all the blockages, all the garbage, all the junk, that can all get cleared out literally the frequency of forgiveness can kind of break that up. I I just saw, you know how uh, when you go to the dentist and you have plaque on your teeth, they can use that um like sonic thing. You know, instead of just scraping your teeth, they use that little thing that goes, you know, and it uses sound frequencies to break up the plaque on your teeth. <laughs> it is literally like that. It is, 
you can use the frequency of forgiveness to break up the plaque inside of your heart chakra. So that is what you guys are, are working through. And let's see what your uh, tarot cards have to say about this. Starting down here with the Page of Cups. Um, this is you, I think, realizing that you want to be embodying like a more watery heart-based energy. That Page of Cups is um, somebody who is just stepping out into a new paradigm of like emotionality, really a new emotional paradigm, feeling a bit unsure about it. Um, and it can also be a little extreme. You could immediately open up and just be like, okay, you know, I'm just going to drop all of my resentments and just um, kind of be wide, wide open uh, to love like, like a child, like, you know, childlike innocence and wonder, um, a little bit like that. Uh, but moving into that, moving on from that is this Hierophant. I always see the Hierophant is your vertical alignment. So your connection with your higher self or with various aspects of your higher self. your higher self um, literally sends down love to you. Like literally your higher self is sending you down love and light. And that is going to be activating you. And if you find yourself bursting out into tears, it is because of this light, because of this energy coming down into your heart. And that, you know, you might just suddenly find yourself overwhelmed and so if you if you literally find yourself bursting into tears for literally no reason um don't don't worry about that just you know let yourself work through this just let yourself cry if if you need to um it it's fine and that is actually what you want to be doing you want to be letting that energy flow you don't want to be stopping that energy because that is maybe what you've done in the past you like blocked everything up you want to be letting it flow so i'm just really reminded of myself as a teenager okay so like I was a really messed up kids uh, I was a messed up kid <laughs> guys um, basically but when I was eight from the time I was eight to the time I was 16 I literally didn't touch another human like that <laughs> I know that sounds incredibly bizarre but I I just I could literally not handle human physical contact um like even passing people, if I had to pass my friend something, like pass them an eraser at school, you know, I'd like, like drop it into their hand. I couldn't touch their fingers. <laughs> and and in that period, I also didn't cry, didn't drop a single tear um, for eight years. And then when I was 16, um, you know, some things happened, um, you know, that were starting to trigger, you know, my heart healing. And I just remember being in this fuzzy white house coat and I was opening up the fridge to get the Brita, the Brita jug you know, to pour myself a glass of water and I poured the water and I just burst into tears and I just started bawling my eyes out, like standing in the kitchen with this stupid jug of water. <laughs> and and I, I like, I had no idea what to do because like I hadn't cried since in eight years, since I was like seven, right? And um, that started a period of my life where I cried almost every day for years and years and years. And it is so funny looking on it, looking back on it now, because now I'm in such a different place. You know, now I've come through all of that and I've come into balance and, you know, now I can look back on it and laugh <laughs> and, and just be like, wow, that was such a weird experience. And wow, you know, I went through all of that just weird shit, but here I am and it's all good. And that is, you know, you guys are going to be following that same kind of pattern because right in the center here, this Six of Pentacles, which is so similar to the Justice card. You can see the scales here. This is, um, you know, a card of energy transference, of energy balancing. Um, you know, represented here as charity is this guy who's much more well off, dropping coins down into these, you know, people who are less well off, dropping the coins into their hands. And this is, I think, what your higher self is doing. Your higher self is lending you energy, is dropping love down into you. Was there a song called Drops of Jupiter? Um, I just heard that drops of Jupiter. Um, I don't, I think that was a song from like 20 years ago. <laughs> it's hard, hard to remember exactly. Um, that might mean something to somebody. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so 
Yeah, that was, that's what I was picking up on with this kind of going to the opposite extreme. If you've been really numb and just really feeling cold and maybe depressed and just whatever, um, in order to go through this heart healing process and this forgiving process, it might just, the floodgates might blast open like that where you, you know, exactly like the story I just shared about myself, how I had, you know, not cried for eight years and then I basically couldn't stop crying for another eight years. That is, uh, you know, cause and effect. You know, if you go to one extreme, you're going to end up going to the other extreme because that is how things end up balancing out. So kind of let yourself roll with that. Know that whatever has been denied you, you know, if you haven't been able to cry or you haven't been able to feel joy, it might go to the other extreme and it's going to take a while of being in the other extreme but eventually it comes back and the scales balance and you come into balance and you come into harmony. And like I was saying, uh, you know, I know this because of my own personal experience and you guys resonate with me. Otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video. So, you know, you guys can absolutely, and you will, you will absolutely go through the same kind of energetic patterns. You know, there's nothing special about me. You guys can, you guys will do the exact same thing. Well, you know, not exactly. Of course you'll do it in your own way, but that same kind of pattern that I experienced, you guys, also will experience it and uh you know moving forward we have more confirmation on the, on this wheel of fortune this is everything about to turn you know if you've been at the bottom of the wheel well finally the wheel is going to start moving on up moving on up right um nothing is static everything is cyclical so whatever cycle you've been in it's about to change up and spiral on out to something new you just need to ride the spiral out also, with this Wheel of Fortune card, if everything is too much, if you're feeling like everything is spiraling out of control, um, that especially if your emotions are spiraling out of control, know that with this Wheel card, you can be like this, you know, Sphinx character and you can ride on the outside of the wheel, which, you know, like a, a merry-go-round, you know, it, you remember when you were a kid going on those things in the park, those spinning platforms? Um, when you're on the outside of the platform, there's so much centrifugal force that it's really hard to stay on and, you know, you'll get shot off the, the platform. You'll get shot off the merry-go-round. That, <laughs> but if you sit in the center, then you're just slowly turning in one spot and it's much easier to stay balanced. So with this, you, you get to choose if you ride on the outside of the wheel and, you know, get, feel all the, the gravity, all the force of gravity, all those G's, or if you want to get sit centered and balanced and that'll, if you sit in the center of the wheel, everything feels slower, uh, more aligned with you, and much more easier to handle. So, you know, there's a, with this card, there's an invitation to either start practicing meditation if you don't, or to deepen your meditation practice if you do, um, or, you know, even if you don't meditate, just to practice um, coming into a state of calmness and awareness of what's happening around you and awareness of your own self. If you can find, you know, your center space, find your alignment and find your your equanimity, your neutrality from that observer place, you can kind of watch the chaos around you. And you can actually also watch the chaos inside of yourself. If your emotions and your thoughts are chaotic, your the awareness of your consciousness is actually inside of that. Um, you know, I, I, for all of my life, I always felt like I was being attacked by my own thoughts. Like my thoughts were spinning out of control. And I used to think that I was my thoughts. And it wasn't until I started meditating that I realized, um, that I am actually like a node, like a node of awareness deep in the center of my consciousness and my thoughts and my feelings happen outside of my awareness. They're actually just appearances in consciousness. So thoughts are actually like irritating noises. You know how you hear a sound and like some bird chirping out your window or crickets. I hate crickets, man. I like birds, but I hate crickets. And it's so irritating. It's so irritating and it makes you agitated and, you know, it bothers you, but you never think I am the cricket. <laughs> you never think that I am the sound of the cricket. Thoughts are actually the same. You can, you can, if you practice meditation or just practice sitting in stillness, you can you will eventually have an experience of realizing that your thoughts, your irritating thoughts that are driving you nuts and agitating you and making you worry and keeping you up at night, they're no different than the sound of a cricket. They're appearing in consciousness, but they're not actually you. You are this node of pure awareness in the center and everything is just happening around you. So 
If everything is too much, try to find that place where you tune into your pure awareness and then you can watch everything go crazy around you and you can, you know, that is how you can find peace and you can find a way to float through this all because you'll be able to remember that your awareness is separated from it and that gives you a little bit of a buffer, right? And now it, it'll kind of become like watching a horror movie, you know? When you're watching a horror movie, if you let yourself be 100% invested, it's too terrifying. You can't handle it. You can't watch it. That's why empaths don't like to watch horror movies. But if you remove yourself a little bit and realize that, okay, I'm not really experiencing this. These people are actors. It's a, it's a TV show. You can give yourself that space, that buffer zone. Then you can watch it and you kind of enjoy it without being overwhelmed by it. It is the exact same thing with your life, even with your own thoughts, even with your own emotions. And okay, where is all this going? <laughs> seven of Wands or Seven of Cups. This is choices. So I take this to mean that the universe doesn't want me and therefore doesn't want you to know what comes next after this. And it's not because they're trying to play tricks on you or trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I think it is that you are really being invited to focus on the here and now, focus on this moment and focus on your, your heart healing journey, focusing on this forgiveness. It, this all comes back to forgiveness. So yeah, whatever you need to forgive, whether that's yourself or others, it's typically both. <laughs> um, that is the kind of paradigm you need to be kind of sitting with, focusing on right now. And you'll know when that starts to shift and then you look to the, your next step but right now you're really being invited to just kind of sit with that and you will have opportunities and choices about what comes next because this new start is coming the new start is coming but from this point right now we can't see what that is so i guess the surprise <laughs> will have to wait I think at least a few weeks for you guys. So just sending you so much, uh, you know, support, some light from my heart to yours while you work through this moment. Heart healing periods are always, you know, challenging <laughs> to say the least. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 4, welcome to your reading. I mentioned I'm recording this one day before the full moon in Aquarius and you guys got the full moon in Aquarius card. Show the world the real you. So especially you might be watching this on the full moon or just after the, after the full moon. Know that this message is like really double, triple confirmed for, for you guys. Show the world the real you. Whatever you've been hiding, and it doesn't have to be anything even that you've been hiding. It could be hold, holding back, like afraid to shine, afraid to shine your light, afraid to let yourself be seen. Um, you know, I was thinking, I, I know a lot of people feel, um, they they feel like they're not being seen. They feel like nobody sees the the real the real them, and they want to they want to be seen. And you know, I understand that that is. A totally valid problem that a lot of people have but I've actually always kind of had the opposite problem and I think you guys might as well where you are afraid of being seen and you feel like you are too easily seen too much seen that everybody's always fixating on you and not in a good way and that kind of situation comes about um, at least one of the ways you can end up like that is because you've had past lives where you know, just to give one specific example, maybe you were a witch and you were burned at the stake, you know, past lives where you did let your light shine, you did let your own individuality and your own authenticity out and you lived your path and the world literally burned you at the stake for it or executed you or stoned you or, you know, the whole world turned its back on you and brought you down and it ended in the worst possible way. So that, if that resonates, this is your moment to be going through that kind of healing 
where you, you, um, what's important to understand here. I think what Saturn wants us to know, because Saturn knows all about this. I talked about this in another pile. Saturn knows all about that energy. That is such a like Saturnian Luciferian energy, really. And I don't want anybody feeling weird when I say Lucifer, because, um, my perspective on Lucifer is that, you know, he was the brightest of the archangels and he is the brightest of the archangels. He went through this fall and had this redemption arc. And if you get really into, you know, esoterica, you know, there's this story of, you know, the fact that Lucifer has already been redeemed and he's been, he's reclaimed his place as the brightest of the archangels. And I really think that whole energetic pattern of going through the fall and this redemption is, you know, that is an energetic service for everybody. That is somebody who shone really bright and, you know, got taken, taken all the way down to the bottom and then rose back up on, you know, on their own, on the wings of their own inner strength, you know, that, and that is, that is you guys. So just know that you've taken on this kind of pattern. And so has Saturn. Saturn is a Luciferian archetype. That those lifetimes and even instances in this life where you had, you know, in elementary school when you had kids bullying you because you shone too bright or because you were too smart or too special or too beautiful even, there was something about you that people knew was different and it threatened them. You know, they might they might have told you that whatever made you special made you was made you weird or made you dirty or made you creepy or just whatever it was about you that that is special about you, other people were threatened by it. And that is why they threw stones at you. That is why they took you down. But know that you're, you're done with that now. We're all done with that. <laughs> we are all done with that. You know, Lucifer has been redeemed. Saturn has been healed. Um, you are no longer going to be burned at the stake for being a witch. No one is getting crucified anymore. You know, we are heading, we are charging off into the age of Aquarius, into 5D, we are all holding hands, marching our way back to source. And that the time of that paradigm is done. I, I really not only do, I understand that on many different levels. I understand it on the level of just my own experience. I understand it on the level of, you know, knowing about just the kind of cosmic cycles that are going on. Um, and I keep hearing those kind of messages from higher dimensional beings, both like from my own personal communication and just from, you know, people who channel the archangels or other other interdimensional beings and who do so in a way more like trans channels, right? People who can trans channel um, other beings. And you, when you really actually hear the words and personalities of these other beings and this message of, you know, the energy has shifted, these old patterns are shifting out and new patterns are coming in. That message is just coming through from all angles, loud and clear. So just know that it's okay to let yourself heal from and let go of those pasts where you were burnt at the stake or stoned or bull bullied or just taken down because that is done. This time when you let your light shine, no one's going to burn you for it, right? <sighs> yeah, and the other moon card here is a personal issue reaches resolution full moon in cancer, that whole problem, all you need to do is let it go. You need to let it go and reclaim your light. And you are coming into a place of clarity on this problem. Maybe you didn't even realize why you were afraid of shining your light. Um, but really, from my personal experience, that absolutely comes from past lives where you, in some cases, were literally burned at the stake for being yourself and for being powerful and for being special and for shining your light, but that it it's, it's done. And you're actually are understanding why you chose to go through those life cycles. Remember that there is no, nothing in your life happens without your consent. And I know when you're in the middle of experiences of being the victim of getting burnt at the stake you know you're you're not going to believe that right when you were literally standing there getting burnt at the stake you're not going to believe that you did that to yourself it's not until after the fact till now when things are starting to shift that you go oh you know guess what not only did i survive despite all that i thrived and all of those experiences that i put myself through all of that pain and suffering made me the awesome 
being that I am today and made me so powerful and made me know myself, you know, because of those experiences that you chose to take on, because you took on so much pain and suffering and like alienation, you know, being able to stand alone in the face of the entire world. How much inner strength does that take, guys? Give yourself credit. Like, come on, <laughs> you know, recognize your own inner strength. It doesn't need, that doesn't need to mean that you're getting arrogant or cocky about it, but still give yourself permission to know how strong and powerful you are. You know, that is, you, you deserve that. You earned that. And other people didn't. Other people didn't stand up on their own. Other people didn't even stand up with you. They didn't even stand with you. You stood alone and nobody else did that. <sighs> and here you are, you survived and now you're going to thrive because of it. It's like you decided to go through all of that because now it is all out of the way. And now you're deriving so much strength because of those lessons and experiences that you had. So this, this, this lifetime now from the time you see this video going forward in your life, is when you reap the rewards of all of that work you put in. This is harvest time. This is energetic harvest time. You know, um, I really think this world and this five of pentacles go hand in hand here. The world card, I take this to mean both that, like I was just saying, this is a, the completion of this cycle for you. You have reached, you know, the pinnacle or the peak of that whole paradigm, that whole problem, and you're moving on. But also, um, you had this sense of poverty, of lack mentality in your position in the world. This isn't just financial or in terms of your physical abundance. This was, <laughs> you know, you having gone through that paradigm of being the alien, of being the outsider, of being the outcast. And for a while, you may have thought that the th things that people said about you were true. You kind of internalized them for a while. But you are, you know, moving out of this. I love under this clarity card is the Page of Pentacles. You're ready for your new start and you realize you don't need to have a million dollars to make your new start. This is, this is... This is really cool. Okay. You know how sometimes we feel like, okay, I can't be happy until I get a better job, until I get a better house and until I get a better partner. You know, you, we often put conditions on ourselves and go, okay, once I have these things, I can be happy. But this page of pentacles is really telling me that you guys are knowing that you can make that shift right now. You can choose to be satisfied with what you have right now. You can be happy with your life right now. And then from that place, since you have, that will fix and heal this scarcity mentality that you had. And from there, the abundance moves on in, right? If you sit and appreciate the fact that you are alive and you have a roof over your head and something to eat, even if that is a cardboard box and, you know, a sandwich somebody, somebody gave you on the street. <laughs> um, you, you know that if you can just go, okay, I'm here, I'm here. I am alive. I am good. You know, I, I have enough to live one more day. And if you can sit in that frequency of satisfaction, satisfaction and contentment, even they can just be contentment of being where you're at, then you attract more and more and more of that, right? It's, I like to think of it more as the law of resonance than the law, law of attraction, because the law of attraction, I think is really coming from like a mental state and that's fine. But I think that is, you know, making your vision boards and forcing yourself to think positive thoughts. That's all fine. But I think it's kind of like training wheels, right? You guys are taking the training wheels off and you know that you can sit and kind of feel, feel the frequencies you want, feeling them from your heart space instead of from your mental space. And knowing that, okay, if you can appreciate the fact that you have $1, then that'll eventually resonate with $10. And then that'll eventually resonate with $100 and it starts bringing it all in. You know, if you resonate with contentment, then you're going to be literally matching more contentment into your life. And moving forward, you have the judgment card and the empress. <laughs> I mean, what more could you want going forward? 
I'm sorry if you guys, I'm sorry if you guys can hear my chihuahua growling behind me. He's very excited for you guys. He wants to play. Okay. I sent him to bed. He can tell I'm, he can actually tell when I'm getting close to finishing recording. Um, and he wants to P L A Y. I can't say the word cause he speaks English. So, uh, sorry about that. As I was saying, you know, I think that he's actually picking up on your guys's energy because this is so much a frequency of coming into excitement and coming into, you know, being able to play and being able to thrive and be excited about being alive. Judgment is in this case, I mean, it's spiritual justice. It is judgment day and you guys are going to be judged, you know, fairly. You guys are going to be getting exactly what you deserve and you deserve a lot. You deserve to be the empress. But also with the judgment card, it is shining your light and speaking your truth. You know, show the world the real you. Shine, shine on guys, shine bright. And then, you know, you're going to be moving on from the page of pentacles all the way to the empress. Just feeling so luxurious, feeling like you own your own slice of the world. You know, if you're having money problems, if you're having, you know, struggles just with getting your life together, this is, it's going to get together. You know, judgment and the empress, whatever your problems are, they're about to be resolved and you're going to be moving on like up a whole like bandwidth of frequency, many, many bandwidth of, bandwidths of frequency. When you guys are working through whatever problems or coming your way over the next few weeks, remember these two cards, Judgment and the Empress, because, man, it's just, your life is going to level up. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. I actually see the, the Judgment card very rarely, and the Empress is not just a material card to me, it is also a very spiritual card. It is when somebody is starting to really embody their spiritual journey and really starting to commit to their spiritual journey, actually, because what were emperors and empresses, you know, historically, they were usually considered divine beings. They were the person who would translate the divine will, you know, to the populace. I mean, of course, there's been all kinds of problems, you know, with <laughs> um, the mixing of church and state, and that's not, you know, really what I mean, but just think of that energy of the Empress being this translation point between like the divine and the mundane, right? That is you. You're starting to be that conduit, be that circuit. So yeah, just, I just wanted to mention that, that this Empress card isn't, isn't just about your material reality. It is you actually starting to transcend your material reality and move into a period where I think your next part of your journey is going to be, you know, a personal one and a spiritual one because you're going to be kind of having resolved your material problems. Not that they ever go away entirely, but they become just so much easier, right? It's like you're no longer struggling to pay the bills on your really shitty apartment. Um, you know, you're trying to figure out, um, you know, what really nice condo to buy. It's like that kind of problem. You still have kind of challenges, but they're just way better ones to have. So, Congratulations, guys. I am so happy to see people making this massive shift, you know, from going from being, you know, somebody who was so discriminated against in their past lives, to just, you know, not only living their material abundance, but a shooting on up into living out there and exploring their spiritual journey. So good luck to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.